Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm so glad to hear that. So I need to speak to Laurel K. Hamilton, please. Go get some Halloween candy. Laurel K. Hamilton. When I found the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series, I didn't realize what I found. I didn't realize how much it was going to impact me, impact my life. I didn't realize how deeply I would connect with it all. I jumped into the seventh book, Narcissus in Chains. I believe that's the seventh book. Um, like my mind was completely blown. It's kind of like a one-off. I didn't realize it was a whole series. I think I realized, but I, I smoked a lot of weed back then, so I probably just forgot. But the point is, I was transported completely to this amazing world where everybody understands that there are fantasy creatures just they just exist I read the seventh book absolutely loved it and then proceeded to forget about it for five years but then i caught back up i have never read a female protagonist or a heroine so badass before when you start off in the first book she's a different person anita is someone coming to terms with her powers and with a lot of things from there it's just like a ramp <laughs> it's a ramp to more fantastical scenarios but it's also a ramp up to emotional things as well that i have never experienced a horror genre so emotional and so deep and so resonating the journey that Anita is on is relatable. If you've ever felt like an odd duck out, if you've ever felt like someone that has a deep well of sadness that will never be quenched, um, that would be me. Your characters don't only connect, they help you kind of purge your sadness. It's cathartic to read these characters developing new skill sets and new ways of dealing with their pain and their anguish. And like I said, I love that this is a fully functional world of vampires and zombies and were animals and magical things, but it's all very rooted in reality. I know you do a ton of research. The artillery that Anita uses, the weaponry, the all of that, I know that that's 100%. For a female who I love to support other females, but I don't always, in the writing game, but I don't always connect with their writing. And I don't know if it's that you're a female and you can write through a male lens because you're in touch with your male side. I don't know what exactly the, the mix is. I connected with Anita immediately. All of the characters, immediately. I can't tell you how good it feels to have that type of connection. Reading is one of my all-time favorite things to do, but I don't always have a book that I click with. I'm a writer too. In no way do I am I comparing myself to your greatness, but I'm just saying, I, I think because I have that kind of tomboy, kind of masculine slant, I, I don't know as I've ever read a character that I connect with as deeply as I do Anita. You deal with so many genres, but you do them all justice. You don't take them and knock them on their ass. It's like you took all of the good parts that have pervaded over the years and kind of whipped them up into a little smoothie and then like put your own ingredients in there. I love that you don't make the vampires sparkle for no reason. And I love that she's a natural necromancer. I think that's, it's so cool. This series is so successful, but it's not a mainstream concept. Raw and real and horrific and orgasmic and blissful and amazing things within the series that isn't going to connect with everybody, but somehow you're still completely successful twice over. The Mary Gentry series, which I haven't read, I'm kind of an Anita purist. You, you have two different series in which captivated a, an audience of like loyal diehard fans. Any of your fans half where I'm at as far as diehardness, and we got your back. I realized my own sexuality deeper through your books. It's not easy to present ideas like that and have them hit, like be knocked out of the park. Sometimes when a writer isn't comfortable with what they're writing, you can feel that through the writing and you aren't comfortable with it. So not only is Anita's world full of reasons for her to gain confidence, you wouldn't be writing any of it if you weren't confident like that yourself. Now we talk about being a badass boss bitch, blah, 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 but you've been writing this series since 91. I owe you a, a tremendous gratitude of 
the example you set for so many people, let alone the this amazing series and all these characters. You set a tremendous example in how to show people, don't tell them. But anyway, yeah, so you know, BDSM scenes, the homoerotic stuff, like that's that's hard for anyone to like be fully okay with as they read it, you know, the first time because either you're fully into it or not, but it's like, it's it's so intimate and it's so, it's such a tricky thing to nail. Every time it is just the right amount of everything. That is a talent. Thank you very much. And I prefer to read sexy stuff. I don't like watching it. That's like a double, woo. I've had two full sets of your series. The first one actually got sold in a storage unit. I just trusted that it was for a reason. So then I went, I set about on this magical wild goose chase to find, in order, the series again. I went to thrift stores, I went, I went to libraries, I went to bookstores, and I found all of them in order again. And so I read them all in order again. I've passed them on to other people that I think would really love them, and of course they absolutely love them. Anita is such a reluctant superhero, such honor and integrity, but she's also completely not comfortable with anything as it's happening. It takes her a whole book to kind of sort of get up to speed with something. It takes her like five books to really be a-okay with it. And I think it's amazing to have a protagonist that's leading all of these, you know, amazing things and, and have her be that way. It's life affirming. Vampires are my favorite fantasy creature. There's only a few people who have written vampires to where I feel like they feel like they feel to me. And you're definitely at the top of that list. All of the characters are like my friends. Every time I read the latest novel, which I covet and I take my time, I, I do not read it all in one night. I, I spread it out over like a month or so, so that I, I don't have to mourn the loss of you so quickly again. My character favorites are, I love Nikki because of the close connection that he has with Anita. I absolutely love Nikki. I love Jean-Claude. Numero uno, he's OG, and I think he is one of the best monsters or, you know, fantasy characters that, it, that it, there has ever been. Mike and Nathaniel, they're kind of like a package deal, almost. Edward is another favorite of mine. I didn't like him, I didn't want to like him. For her to have a, a working relationship with him is, is tremendous. And I don't want to say too much about plots and stuff like that because I don't, I know you know, and I don't want to cheapen it. I think I read in an article once, I think it was Entertainment Weekly, and they were doing a vampire thing because vampires all of a sudden were like a big deal. And you're just like, yeah, I know. I've been doing it a while. They interviewed you because you're a pioneer of the whole genre before it was a thing. And you and Anne Rice. And they asked you, like, oh, would you ever do a screen adaptation? And I, if I remember correctly, you were like, no. There's no way I could do my world justice in two hours, you know, which I 100% agree with. However, I, I would love, and I think all of your fans, shoot me if I'm wrong, but I think your fans would really love something that's in the same vein as an offshoot, you know, maybe some similar notes and a few little like shout outs to your fans, you know, little Easter egg type things, but you would have to produce it in charge of it creatively the whole way through. Side note on that, I do think you've been ripped off in that area. Wildly popular teen series that came out while back. It makes me sad that so many people are so into that version when they could have the raw, gritty, beautiful, devastating, brilliant grown-up version that you've put out a long time ago. It's just their loss. I have nothing but admiration and respect and a deep affinity for your work. I want to check out Terrible Fall of Angels. I believe that's the name of the Angel series that you just put out. Like I said, I, I'm so close to Anita and her world. I don't know if I would be able to handle another world, but I'm gonna try. Thank you for kicking out another one because as I've mentioned before, I have a thing for angels. So when I saw that you were writing in that genre, I was like, oh, I got really excited. In a way, an author is closer to you than any other type of artist because you're walking hand in hand with the author. Your imagination and the author's imagination get together and have this intimate, deep, sensual, exciting, very personal relationship. I can't thank you enough for all of the deep healing and deep excitement and 
riveted till four in the morning when I have to wake up at seven nights that I had. Discovering Anita, discovering her world, discovering all of her men, all of her women. My jaw drops several times in the novel. I am always left with something to ponder and something to consider and something that I feel like I took away. Thank you for this deep relationship that I've had with you for so long that is so fulfilling to me that you don't even know me, but I feel like you do. I feel like you know my heart because I resonate so deeply with what you write. I feel like I know your heart too. I know that sounds crazy. I think that's why fans are made. Share your soul with people when you share your art. And so in that way, what you've shared is just breathtaking. You. I don't ever want them to go away. I know at some point you'll probably have to stop writing them, but it's okay because I'll just reread the series periodically and, and as I do now and and it'll be okay. I'll get new things from it each time just like I do third time and yeah. So thank you Laurel K. Hamilton. If I'm ever in St. Louis, I would love to get together and shoot the shit. I would love that.